Companions or followers in games can be fun or they can be frustrating. You can find them as simple narrative followers through a level that provide you exposition, they can be dungeon companions that help out or even essential, or they can be the target of those dreaded escort quests in games. I wanted to see if we can improve on the simple follower person builds of past Game Builder Garage videos and make a more fully fledged companion with a few extra features. For a start, they should respect your personal space and have a designated follow distance. They should also be able to do some basic platforming so that they don't just follow you and fall off every ledge or cliff that they come upon. Maybe they can even help with puzzles. Here's an example of a yellow button that opens up the ability for one player to cross. Let's ask our follower to wait on that button so that we can can get to the other side and step on the other yellow button, which will then allow us to call them over to us and have them engage and disengage their following behavior whenever we want. I think accomplishing something like this would be really useful and could be a building block for a bunch of other follower features. As usual, we're going to start with this basic setup where our left control stick moves our player character and the right stick controls the camera. Our following person right now doesn't really interact with us, but that'll change soon enough. The basis for any good following person is going to be two location sensors, one connected to the player and one connected to the following person. We're going to mostly work in the Z and X axis since those are the axes that are used to calculate which direction you need to move to get to your target. We'll add two subtraction node on, one for the Z axis and one for the X axis. Then we'll take our player location for X and Z and plug them into the upper input and our followers location output for X and Z and plug them into the lower input. What comes out of this subtraction nodon is going to be the difference in relative position between the player and the follower. We're going to adjust the movement speed of our follower and decrease it to something like 0.5 since depending on how far they are from one another, the following character is going to get crazy huge inputs which will make them move faster than the player. Decreasing the movement speed is going to help dampen that difference and make it seem more natural. Make sure the frame of reference is set to the world so that the camera doesn't affect the follower movement. This is the basic fundamental of the following mechanic. We're just getting the difference in position and sending that raw data into our following person. But it really doesn't feel or look all that great. So the first thing we're going to do is make it so that they respect our personal space and they don't follow after a given point. What we're going to do is add an absolute value nodon to each of these subtraction nodon outputs. We'll basically be mirroring whatever we do for one axis for the other. We'll run the output from the subtraction nodon into the absolute value. What we're doing is checking if the z or x difference in position is greater than 1. If it is, then we want to let that signal go through and have it move the following character. What we'll do is add a multiplication node on, which will multiply the output of the subtraction node on by a zero or one yes or no signal from our greater than node on. So if the absolute value of the distance is greater than one, then we'll move the follower closer to the player character. And you can change the constant node on that goes into the comparison if you want them to follow from further away. So you can see how easy it was to add that in, and it makes a big difference in the feel of a level when you don't have your follower person just running into you constantly. The next thing we're going to do is add a toggle so you can decide when your following character actually follows you and when they stay put. We'll start with a button press node on, in this case I'm going to use X, and a simple flag. We'll have the X button turn on the flag, then we'll add an AND node on and make it so that when the flag is on and X is pressed again, we'll turn it off. This is a simple three node on setup for an on and off toggle. Just make sure that the button press setting is set to on press and not while pressed. Then we'll add a not node on. This is going to send out a one or true output when we haven't toggled a follower to stop following us. All we're going to do is add an extra multiplication node on at the end of each of the logic tracks that we had before. This is like an extra check. We're taking the signal of which direction the follower should move in and we're multiplying it by either zero, which means don't follow, or a one, which means do follow. And then we're sending those outputs back into our following person. Now when we press X, the following person will either start following or stop following the player. You might also want to attach the follow toggle button to some kind of sound or animation so that you are also aware as the player that you've just affected the behavior of your follower. Now the last thing we're going to do is create a simple system for your follower to jump when you jump so that they can clear some basic platforming challenges. This is actually really simple. We're going to add a button press for the jump and connect it to the jump input on our person. We're going to take that same button press and send it into a launch object. We'll set it so that it's a sphere or whichever of the basic object shapes is least likely to be found in your game world and make it so that it's visible, non-movable, non-destructive. 
basically turn off all the settings. Even though you don't need it, I also throw zero gravity in there as a setting. What we're basically doing is creating a marker on the map every time that you jump. What your follower character is then gonna do is check for that mark or sphere that you left on the map and it will jump when it detects it within its boundaries. So we'll add a touch sensor to our following character and we'll have it detect in this case for spheres. Now, because we set a follow distance of one, you wanna make sure that the sphere or whatever shape you leave behind is at least 1.1 on the Z and X axis so that it's big enough to always be detected by your following character or else at weird angles they won't jump when you jump every time. Now the system's not perfect and there are little things that can happen like they'll keep jumping when they shouldn't but I think it's a good basic system. This can be fun to play around with and try and create some kind of puzzle levels or add in multiple followers and add extra behaviors and customize it for your own game or your own ideas. Let me know if you've ever used some kind of AI partner or companion in any of your games and share the codes in the comments if you have, and I hope you have a good day.